Oh, yeah, why Mimi. Okay, I, 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 I will. I will. So, so Mimi. Our head. So Mimi. Mimi doesn't believe in that, isn't it? I know. I know. Do you but worship? It's, it's do you worship no. the Son, Second no. Member of the Trinity? This is like I love Jesus. Jesus, Jesus is my love. Questions. I have. I, I have two questions. Do you love Jesus? Yes. Good. You answer that question. So don't answer it again. I'm not going to ask that question again. Do you worship the Son? Do you worship? Do you worship the Son? Yes, I do. What did Jesus say? Who should worship? God. The Father, because He is God. Jesus the Father. Jesus says, worship the Father. And you worship Jesus. Imagine Moses no, comes along. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Imagine, imagine Moses comes to the Jewish people and he says, worship Yahweh. And these people, instead of worshiping Yahweh, they worship Moses. How would you feel? It's idolatry. Uh, worship a human. No, no. Jesus no, no, was no. not, uh, uh, if, if he was in human flesh, no, but he was he, not he, 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 God that's manifested that's why he himself didn't want to be in. If Jesus says, God worship manifested himself in. someone else, God manifested himself and you in worship God. God him, because the Bible says uh, that we have to sell everything we do is in the name of Jesus Christ. What we did have Jesus the, Christ we have say? We have the Holy Spirit. Okay, I think that we're is not going anywhere. Power. Yes. I think the discussion will come to a halt. He said, don't worship, Jesus. Don't worship me, but that's while he was in the flesh on earth. No, no. When we, he was, he was fully up. human. When I'm not listening to you. You're not important. You're a heckler. You're not letting her answer. You're a heckler. You're not letting her so, answer. Mimi. You are talking, talking, talking. You have a belief system you know in that, which... You know what, you in know which... I'm interested in? I'm interested in change. I'm interested in progress. Go ahead. I'm interested in truth. I'm sorry. Be as well. Brother, we can shake hands. I, I don't shake hands, if you don't mind. Okay, right. I have a question. I know you don't right. shake hands right. with him. I respect right. that. Good, good. I have a question. So, so the truth is... God tells us who Christ is in the Quran and his relationship between him, his people and God. God tells us very clearly Christ is a messenger, no more than that. You should only worship and God was I agree. and not... I agree. Wait, 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 please, 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 please. Quran tells all people of the scripture, come, let us reason together in a common ground that we worship none but God. None but God. No, no, no. You worship. No, no, no. You worship God and His Son and something else like a Holy Spirit. It's one. But that's not how Abraham, Moses, David said that. They all said God is not other than who he is. There is no likeness unto God. You cannot see. God is not like anything. Because you don't study so the Bible. So if you read like in Quran, you the Jewish understanding of God, you will realize. Their understanding of God and the Islamic understanding of God is essentially one God, unipersonal. This God has no like like a human body or something like this and so on. He's God, worthy of worship, independent, absolute, almighty. Later on, something comes along. Somebody says, God is a brother and an uncle and a sister and a mother and a wife. He will say, what are you talking about? This is not being taught by any of the prophets of God. So I urge you to look into the Quran and you will see where our disagreement is. I want to read Quran and uh, that's why I wanted you to Let's answer leave it the there. questions. Do you want a copy of the Quran? If you haven't got I can get a copy from there. Yeah, I want. Okay. Brother, can you get me a copy of the Quran? From, from there, inshallah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Mimi. You have to read the Quran to do, not, do Yeah, I want to read yeah. to, uh, to, yeah, to because, um, debate with them, otherwise uh, they won't understand. Just scriptures and I wanted things I wanted things to be like clear and yeah. to clarify certain things. And obviously if, I can't if, uh, just speak about that's it. That's another question. Okay. Do you accept the Hindu book? say the Veda to be divinely inspired? No, no, we don't. Right. They came before the Bible. Why don't you accept that? Why? Because they understand. I met, the truth. Uh, I met uh, living, I met, thank you so much. I met living God. I met, I met God who changed my life. I gave my life to God and he changed my life completely. Yes. Is it possible? I'm coming from, uh, is it possible? from sickness, from illness, from depression, from anxiety, social anxiety. I was afraid to leave my house. I couldn't get up from bed. I was bed bound. Jesus when you, Christ is the healer. He sure. healed me. When you, he delivered me from Mimi, this. When you, and I am set free. I can understand so that. I want to share that. I want now, to share God of healing. Mimi, when you accept Allah as your only true God, accept Moses, Jesus, 
Muhammad as the messengers of God, peace be upon them all, it will set you free from the worship of the creation, worship of prophets and messengers, worship of angels, worship of your own self and your own ego. You will free yourself, no anxiety, you'll have content in the heart. Ask any Muslim. I have Muslim friends and I discuss Ask, ask, ask them. Yes. When you yes. read the Quran, when you remember Allah, how do you feel? They will say, our hearts are so content. The tranquility and content that you'll have in Islam when you become a Muslim, you realize you lose nothing. You don't lose Christ as the messenger well, of God. When I become a Muslim, you I don't become lose a Moses no, as the messenger of God. You gain them all because these are all prophets and messengers of the same God. What happened was are, are all these messengers uh, equal like Moses? We make no says, distinction between them. Quran says us, La We make no distinction between them. God has favored some of the others. Like God spoke to Moses directly. But he hasn't spoken to every prophet directly. So some prophets and messengers, God has special, specific privileges. It's, so uh, it's, if Jesus is a prophet, has specific it's, privileges? It's, no, 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 I'm saying some prophets, God has you know, given some fadl, this differentiation over the others, it's up to God. It's up to God whether if God takes one of his prophets from this earth to all the way up above the seven heavens to God himself and then has a discussion and personal one-to-one -one discussion okay this is my revelation to you not all prophets had that discussion prophet muhammad was taken from this earth do you to believe this in islam that you uh, you can hear god by reading quran yeah. god is speaking the quran is unadulterated unchanged but do you have personal speech of god, relationship with god? yeah absolutely okay. this personal relationship is so close God tells us he's closer than our jugular vein. You cannot get any closer than that. Quran, it says in other religion, in other religion, in the war. listen really, you have Kill to go the through middleman. You have to go through this man, like in Christianity, Jesus Christ says, no one goes to the Father except through me. He's the middleman. To us, you don't need a middleman. What? You go to God directly. You say, God. You don't say, oh, Jesus, can you ask God X, Y, and Z? You don't do that. That's indirect relationship. The direct relationship is when you ask God and God answers you. Can I ask so you are going to heaven you, or hell? Uh, do you, for example, regarding uh, Allah, like when you're meeting, yes, gathering in mosques, do you, uh, are your leaders, uh, for example, uh, praying for healing for people? Like how, how do you see healing in Quran? When you are in any distress and you stand on, in prayer, your heart and your emotions, they are tuned back to reality. Yeah? God tells us the mechanism how to heal. So there are times where we will be grieving. We will be emotionally upset and so on. But there's a mechanism in which when we remember Allah, when we stand with patience to Allah, God, yes. no, no, trust, rely on, trust, and you remember Allah, with patience and you stand to Allah, speak to him directly. Is Allah healing uh, physical illness also? Like is he healing cancer? Is he healing? No, no. What I'm saying is Allah can heal anything. anything. Okay. A cancerous patient he can heal. But we don't go about like Christians do. Oh, there you go. Let me go to the hospital and cure. Because if I, I actually work in a hospital. How do you? If I ask, bring your healers and cure those people with cancer, you would fail. I can challenge you. Who wants to accept that challenge? Do you know anyone in your church who can heal? Then come to my hospital and heal those two. Like right, come. Where? I will tell you off camera. Okay. Right? You can come to this hospital and see if it, if it can cure. Because if you can cure, good. But I know from experience the number of people I've spoken to, the healers, that when it comes to practical demonstration of healing, they don't do that. They only do on stage, on TV, is it called TV healers and so on and so forth, okay. not in real life. So, and, but I wanted to ask about, uh, specific about Islam and Quran. How do you, um, how do you deal with that? Where is in Quran are the scriptures, for example, about the healing? Like, obviously I understand yeah, that... Quran says, uh, when the you Quran itself the truth, the truth has is shifa yeah. fi sudur. The Quran itself says, it itself is a shifa, a medicine, a cure 
Oh yes, okay. Yeah. Okay, I understand. Yeah. And for example, if you have like uh, terminal illnesses, like you know somebody's dying of cancer, obviously you work in the hospital, so you've seen a lot of this. So what uh, are you as a uh, like Muslim minister doing? Muslim for those chaplains people? can go there, okay. and then they can remember, remind them of God, re recite do you to them pray Quran. For healing, or how do you do that? No, I'm saying they can. The chaplains, who is yes. their official job for that, they can go to a terminally ill patient, mm -hmm. and they can remind them of God and read the Quran and it will help soothe and settle the heart. We have seen many examples in which a baby, for example, crying, crying so much, put the Quran on. Same comes. Thing, same thing comes. Um, so basically, um, more, we will that's, see. That's how so, so, so this is how the Quran affects even a child. Bible like imagine he is so, so much, you know, I'm just, put the Quran on, you will see the effect it has. So the Quran has such a powerful effect on the heart. It changes life altogether. When you read the Quran... But for example, if somebody is lying in coma in the hospital, so do you send, uh, like your uh, minister will go there to, like what they do? Depends they on the wishes of the patients and parents. Okay, so if they want... It depends on their, their, their wishes. Because okay. someone who's comatose, they are not able to speak to you what, what they need. So if the relatives want, a Muslim chaplain to go there and, and then speak so to them and so what on. What do they do? Like, what do you do in that uh, instance? You. Do you pray over them? Do you? To, to you, you may have Quran? a prescribed. To you, you may have a prescribed mechanical prayer. To us, the Quran itself is healing. So all they need to do is, at that point, while he's comatose or she's comatose, to remind them that they should remind themselves that there is none worthy of worship except Allah and Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah. To keep reminding them until their life is expired from this world. So this is the most important because you need to die on the faith in which you have not associated partner with God. You have not rejected, I'm just telling you, you want to end your life from this world when the time comes, not yourself, but the time will come you will die. No one can forward it an hour or delay it an hour or a second. Our death is fixed. So when that time comes, we want to make sure that we die on a state of worshipping none but God. So you have to make sure that you believe on the God is what we worship and no one else. Like specific scenario, yes? Like um, somebody who is a Muslim is, is lying in coma in the hospital, yes? And what uh, in Muslim faith, what do you do for those people? And if they, the, so the Muslim the chaplains yes? can have a whole program of what to read. But the most important fact is to remind but how that you individual. But person who is in a coma, for example? Like, do they, they do can they still hear you. Yes, but do they go there and read Quran? Or do they uh, lie hands on the person? Do they pray for the person? How does it do? No, I'm just telling you. It all depends. If the family is happy, for yes. example, the Imam, the Muslim chaplain, whether she's a woman or, or a man, they can go there and start reading the Quran or many supplications from the Quran and the authentic hadith teachings of the Prophet Muhammad But most importantly, out of all that, as someone is about to die, it's important to remind them to die while reciting, saying in the heart, in the tongue, or in their mind, this statement of faith. لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمد رسول الله that I bear witness there's nothing no deity worthy of worship except God Allah alone and I bear witness that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah because once you die on that faith Jahannam which is what hell is forbidden God would not put you into hellfire even if you did something wrong and you are punished in hellfire eventually you will come out and you will be through the mercy of God, through the grace of God, to paradise, which he is prepared for those who have the correct belief in him. Anyone who believes that God is a tripod or a camera or a tree or a woman or a man, rat, monkey, whatever, God will not put them into paradise because God says he forgives all sins except one. Imagine the grievous sin that one can commit and if they die on that, God will never forgive. He warns again and again, the most grievous, the magnanimous sin in the sight of God that he will never forgive is associating partner with God, like a son or a daughter or a brother or a mother or anything of the creation. 
you have to worship God alone because he is one and only and self-sufficient. That was the message of all the prophets and all the messengers. Nothing new in Islam in terms of this message. So we have to make sure when we die, and we don't know when we're going to die. I can die the next minute, you can die the next minute. But we will have to make sure that we die on the state of submission to our God, worshipping him alone. That is the message of Islam. Your heart will be cured in this life if you believe in that already, because it will manifest you on your actions, how you feel happy and joy and no anxiety, no depression. That's why if you think about suicides, you know who is committing suicide in the largest numbers? Not the Muslims. What a, what a ignorance in Iraq. It's not Muslims. It is those people who are atheists and nihilists and so on. If you go there in some eastern countries and so on and so forth. Because for them, yeah, material the world is not... They rejected God and... Yes, yeah, yes. The That's why their depression is so much because they have not, when they realize what awaits them, nothing. When they die, nothing. Absolutely. And they get so much depressed in this nihilism that they suffer this anxiety. So that's why when you have the belief in your heart that God alone is worthy of worship, you will feel so much tranquility in your heart. And when you reject any associates with God and say nothing worthy of worship, and that's why you'll be interested to find out. In Islam, when somebody wants to become a Muslim, they go through a process of negation and affirmation. Negation is nothing is worthy of worship. Stone, tree, man, whatever you can imagine, nothing is worthy of worship. And then you make an affirmation, only, only God. When you do that, you will automatically realize, I am not going to be a slave to economic machinery. I am not going to be a slave to my desires. I'm not going to be a slave to fashion. I'm not going to be a slave to football stars and pop stars and celebrities. You will only be a slave to God alone. Yes, I agree on that one, 100%. Hundred, hundred yes. I'm gonna, I'm gonna read because I want to get familiar with the. Uh, sure. Uh, I can't. Uh, Pleasure speaking to you. More. Apologies when we kept on because of the hecklers. This, this, sometimes it can be heated like this. But please reflect and read the Quran. I will. Yeah, yeah. Find out what it says about the concept of God, about Christ, about the mother of Christ. I yeah? have an, um, I have a Muslim friend, so I speak with them about God. I was yeah, working yeah. with Muslim people, so we discussed this and. Uh, I was asking about Jesus, so my friend was sending me some stuff about, you know, uh, this to watch. And I want to, I want to just get into... Because if you really want the personal relationship and this happiness in the heart... I have that happiness. No, no. I have that happiness. I'm not saying you don't, but when you have the Quran and read and understand and then you authentically worshipping God alone, your level of happiness will be elevated. And I agree with you that uh, only God can be worshipped, nothing else. Exactly, I, I exactly. exactly. Yes. You take care. You take care, thank you. Thank you. Also, listen to the Quran. Listen to the Quran. Make a picture of you. Yeah. That was a hectic one. I don't speak to hecklers. Some of my exploiters for us.